Gold bounces this Tuesday as the dollar also moves higher on the day. But is the correlation between the dollar and gold shifting? Joining us now from the CME is Todd Baba Horowitz. Thanks so much for being back with us, Todd. Danielle, it's always great to be on with you. So let's talk about gold's uh, historically inverse relationship with the U.S. dollar. But it now seems that this correlation could be shifting. We saw the dollar down yesterday. Gold was down as well. Today we have gold up with the dollar also moving higher. Is this just a one-off, Bubba, or could you see a fundamental shift happening here? I really don't see the shift, Daniela. I think really what we have here is a, a more of a one-off. You know, the, the markets have been extremely quiet. Gold has been performing nicely, but had a pretty big sell-off. But when you look at the overall picture, the dollar really hasn't moved very much, and it is still near multi-month lows right now. So I don't really see that shift. I think that it's still directly tied to what the dollar is going to do. And I think you're going to see the dollar probably pop here a little bit, which will bring gold down, but it'll bring gold down to a level I'm looking to buy anyway. So, but I do think that the relationship will remain the same as long as we have the Federal Reserve involved and as long as we have these things going on, the dollar will still be the key player in all the commodity spaces. Now, Baba, let me ask you, the main driver for gold remains U.S. monetary policy, but are there other noise factors uh, that are helping gold uh, right now? Well, I think gold is, first of all, it's, it's by some is considered a safety play and certainly not bad. I believe that everybody should own a little bit of gold in their portfolio. I think you're seeing people looking for other asset classes to go to. You know, people that might not normally even invest in gold are now looking to gold. You know, what we've really seen here, Daniela, is a market that has been forced into the equity market and people are getting a little bit nervous. So they're starting to move to some other classes and there is no better class than gold. If you want to own something, feel it, touch it and look at it, you buy gold. And that's one thing that I think we're starting to see is a shift from some of the money that was going to the markets is now coming to the gold market, which it makes sense. Let's shift gears here and talk silver. I've spoken to analysts who have told me that silver's performance in relation to gold is worrisome, but you remain optimistic. Why is that, Bubba? I think silver is still a great play. And of course, we're, if we look at historical relationships, it's one of the cheapest relationships to gold that it's ever been. Now, silver has the one advantage that gold does, and it's also an industrial metal. So if we, if we ever get business back in, it might even be used for real work. But overall, I think it's a great play here. It's actually performing quite well percentage-wise compared to gold over the years. So I think silver continues to perform well. I think I wanna, I'm still a buyer of silver, and I think you should still be adding silver to your portfolio because I think overall it, it will change that relationship, and I think it'll, it'll run up and get back to a more normal relationship with gold. And I look for both of them to go higher. Baba, always a pleasure having you on. Thank you, Daniela. I appreciate it. And thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We have an inside look at Jim Rickard's new book, The New Case for Gold. He's in studio up next.